Hi guys, it's Kayla here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my June 2019 TBR. I had to think of that through. The, the months and the dates are just, it's crazy that we're already in June. Like that just blows my mind. So uh, right now it is June 3rd. It is Monday, June 3rd. I just got home from work and I want to film my TBR. So I made a list in my in my book bullet journal, my book reading bullet journal, and, oh, that's not it, JK. So this is my June TBR, it's really cute. I um, did a little bit of some drawings right here and some stickers and just kind of, I made it cute, One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this month I'm hoping to read six books. Now, when I was making this, you know, if you've seen my my May wrap-up video, you'll know that I only read one book in May. And I had planned to read seven, I believe. I believe there were seven of these puppies. I was going to one, two, three. Yeah, I was going to read seven books. I only read one. So um, I went ahead and kind of, there were still, there were still some books on my May TBR that I really want to read that I didn't get to and so instead of kind of doing a completely new June TBR I kind of just transferred some of the books over so the first book I wrote down is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing now this is a book that's been on my TBR not too long but it's definitely something that I have been dying to read so I'll read you the synopsis I don't have it with me so I'm hoping to get it online or something like that um, all right, so it says, and this is the, the little description off of Goodreads. It says, Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith in this wildly compulsive debut thriller about a couple whose 15 year marriage has finally gotten too interesting. Our love story is simple. I met a gorgeous woman, we fell in love, we had kids, we moved to the suburbs, we told each other our biggest dreams and our darkest secrets, and then we got bored. We look like a normal couple. We're your neighbors, the parents of your kid's friend, the acquaintances you keep meaning to get dinner with. We all have secrets to keeping a marriage alive. Ours just happens to be getting away with murder. So that sounded really good. It sounded so good. It's a thriller and I like thrillers. I love thrillers. But what really got me was the whole Dexter thing. I said Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Now, I am a diehard fan of Dexter. I've watched the season, I've watched the entire, what is it called? Series? I've watched the entire series a couple of times and I even named my dog Dexter. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's because of Dexter. I love Dexter so much. So my Great Dane is named Dexter. Here's a picture of him. Dex my dog, not Dexter. Anyways, so yeah that sounds so good i'm really excited to read it actually me and my sister are both gonna read it she just recently got into thrillers and she is obsessed and she really wants to read this so we're gonna read this together this month i'm really excited about it so that is the first book i have decided to read in june the next book is the body in the castle well now this one i do have and I need to get, like, this honestly has to be the first book I read. Like, I need to finish this tonight. Because I got, I'm up to page, where am I? 23. I'm up to page 23. It's really good. It, it's already giving me a very Agatha Christie, very, like, classic mystery vibes. Like, it's great. I love it. I, I'm really digging it. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, unless it's changed, this is supposed to be released June 6th. So today is Monday, June 3rd. June 6th is supposed to be released. What is that? Thursday. Thursday, this Thursday, this is supposed to be published. And so I really want to read it by then. That way I can, you know, do a video and kind of get it out there. Um, you know, so people might want to read it because I'm loving it so far. I think it's really good. So, so yeah, so this is definitely something I'm going to finish like really soon. So that's, that's next. And I, I read this one before, not, I didn't read it, but like the, the back of it, it's basically this detective, he discovers a body in this well in this small town in France. It's somewhere. <laughs> It's in a place. 
I can't remember where, I can't remember where this takes place, but I'm pretty sure it takes place in France because everybody speaks French. So yeah, so it's really good so far. So that's the next one I want to read. And then, ooh, this one, I did not have this on my TBR yet, but I have been dying to read it. And honest to God, I just want to read it right now, but I really need to read the castle, the body in the castle well. But Sawbones, the Sawbones book. The horrifying, hilarious road to modern medicine. This was actually created because of a podcast. These two people, these uh, husband and wife duo, they have a podcast. It's called Sawbones and I actually downloaded it and I've listened to some episodes and they're really good. They're really funny. Um, but this is like a really cool book and it's basically the horrifying, hilarious road to modern medicine. I mean, like the craziest things that people used to think was smart to do, like bloodletting, if you've ever heard of bloodletting and stuff like that. I'm really excited to read this. Now the cool thing is that there's like pictures and illustrations and like little blurbs. So. It seems like it's gonna be like an easy read, kind of like a textbooky kind of read, but I'm so excited to read it just because this kind of macabre, you know, sinister, weird kind of stuff I really love. I just, it gets me going, I love it. So, so yeah, I'm gonna read this. Then, my sister is a huge reader like me and she told me today, which doesn't surprise me, but um, she said that like her favorite author is Colleen Hoover and she has, read every single book that Colin Hoover has written, which is really impressive. Um, so uh, I've read three. I've read three of Colin Hoover's books and I really loved two of them. The other one was all right. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, I loved it, but it was okay. And so I told Liv, I was like, yeah, I really need to read more Colin Hoover. So she was like, because ah, we were hanging out and she ran <laughs> into her room or whatever and brought me back this. So this is what I'm reading right now. All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Uh, I actually started it today at lunch while I was at work and I'm already on page 54. I love, I really love Colleen Hoover's writing. Her writing is so, it's simple and, but pretty and like easy to just fall into. Like I feel like it takes no effort at all to read her books, but at the same time, she has a way with words like you can totally tell her style and stuff so I, I just I love I'm loving it already and I did not even read the back I didn't even ask Lib what it was about when I started reading it it was kind of cool like having no idea what a book is about so and honestly if I had read the back this is not something I would have picked up on my own it just isn't and I'm liking it so you know I got to give books a chance so I'll read you the back so it says can a love story with a perfect beginning survive a lifetime between two imperfect people? Then, the last thing Quinn expected was to meet the love of her life just outside her fiance's front door. A year after leaving behind their cheating partners, Quinn and Graham are in a perfect relationship that seems, de that seems designed by fate. Now, seven years later, their perfect love is threatened by their imperfect marriage. The memories, mistakes, and dreams that they have built up over the years are tearing them apart. The one thing that could save them might also be the very thing that pushes their marriage past the point of no return. Written with the same emotional depth and keen insight that made Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us and Ugly Love instant New York Times bestsellers, All Your Perfects is a, perf is a powerfully moving story about a broken couple whose future hinges on promises made in the past reminding us that the enduring power of love is the ultimate savior. So yeah, I mean this book, and this is not something I would normally pick up because I I really only like reading romances that start, like I wanna, I wanna read it from the beginning and then I want it to end when they get together. It's rare that I wanna read a love story that is already in the middle or almost at the end. You know, I mean, it is really so good so far, so I really like it. So this is another one I'm planning on reading. And then back to my journal. The other book that I started reading in May, but I did not finish and didn't get very far, was Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen and I love historical classics and look how fat this puppy is, but it's because of the it's because of the text. Do you see that? And I'm just excited to read this. This is a love story. I know it has a happy ending, so 
Uh, maybe I'll read this one after I finish All Your Perfects because I don't know if that's going to have a happy ending. I don't think you really know when it comes to Colleen Hoover. So, so yeah, I'm excited about reading this one. This is, um, la 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 la. This says, uh, perhaps the most affecting and accomplished of Jane Austen's novels, Sense and Sensibility, which grew out of an adolescent sketch, Eleanor and Marianne, tells the story of two sisters, polar opposites, Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, whose hopes of marrying well are smashed when their family's estate is left to an arrogant stepson upon the death of their father. Thus pauperized the practical, almost prissy Eleanor, the sense of the duo, sets out to hide her deep affection for her brother-in-law, pained at the fact that they cannot marry. But when younger Marianne, indulging her almost hedonistic pursuit of passion, becomes infatuated with a dashing rogue, her clamorous spirits threatens to blind her to a more lasting and genuine love. Delicately piercing and exquisite in its irony, Sense and Sensibility, Austin's first published novel, is a profound examination of two sisters who discover the limits of both the mind and the heart. So yeah, I've seen the movie. It is really cute. The movie, the one I'm thinking of is the one with um, Kate Winslet and Emma, somebody, Emma Stone? No, not Emma Stone. It's not Emma Watson. <laughs> I can't, I don't know. But it definitely has Kate Winslet in it. And it has Snape, Professor Snape's in there too. I can't remember his name either. But yeah, so I'm really excited to read this book. This is, this is gonna be pure comfort, I already know. So that's the other one. And then, and then there's one more, one more I plan on reading, which I believe was on my last, last month's. Yeah. Yeah, this one was on last month's TBR as well, and that is The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. This is a graphic novel, and I think this is actually, because this, this is The Complete Mouse, I think this is a combination of two parts of the, of mouse, I think. And it is all a graphic novel and it and it's something I've been wanting to read forever so I'll read you the inside it is the story of Lodic Spiegelman a Jewish survivor of Hitler's Europe and his son a cartoonist coming to terms with his father's story mouse approaches the unspeakable through the diminutive its form the cartoon the Nazis are the cats and the Jews mice shocks us out of any lingering sense of familiarity and succeeds in drawing us closer to the bleak heart of the Holocaust. Mouse is a haunting tale within a tale. Vladik's harrowing story of survival is woven into the author's account of his tortured relationship with his aging father. Against the backdrop of guilt brought by survival, they stage a normal life of small arguments and unhappy visits. This astonishing retelling of our century's grisliest news is a story of survival, not only of Vladik, but of the children who survived even the survivors. Mouse studies the bloody paw prints of history and tracks its meaning for all of us. So this is a very, a very heavy subject. This is about the Holocaust and the Holocaust has always been a subject that's very near to my heart. I don't, I didn't know anybody or have any family that were involved, but ever since I first learned about it when I was a kid, it was one of those subjects that just stuck with me and I research it as much as I can and watch movies and read books just because I want to understand, I want to understand it and it's, they can't understand something that doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. So, uh, but it's still, it's still one of those things where you, we can't forget it. You know, we have to, we have to remember what happened. And this is a book I've been wanting to read for so long. And the art alone is just so beautiful. I mean, I'm so stoked to read this. Like, oh my God, all the feels. So, so yeah. The Complete Mouse. This is another one of those books that's like on my bucket list books because I've been wanting to read it forever. So yeah. So those are the six books I plan on reading in June 
2019. Hopefully I do much better this month than I did last month. That is my plan and we'll see what happens. So yeah. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, somebody. God damn it. I can't. You know, like, I'm a hot mess. In this wildly compulsive. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Oh crap, I don't have it with me. That's okay. So my sister let me borrow this book, All Your Perfects. Wait, I have it right here. Oh. ingenuous jet and and hopefully I do much better this month <laughs>